Hi guys. Let me know if you can see and hear me. Matt was helping me figure something out real quick that I discovered today. Ouch. Can, let me know if you can see or hear me. I came on a little bit early because this is going to be a longer uh, no, live than normal. Just I'm probably going to end up breaking it into two parts, which is not a big deal. Hi. So, guys, to, um, we're using StreamYard. So, for me to be able to see your name, you have to give StreamYard permission for me to see your name. So just let me know. Matt and I were figuring something out. I think I might have figured out a little trick. So we are going to be working on this card tonight. So we're going to be using our Let's Be Quackers and this stamp and our Shaker Creator die. So we have, there's five of them. I have two more that I've been using their parts of. So there's five. So just let me know if you can see or hear me. It's just six o'clock now, so we're all good. Someone did say hi, Nicole. So that's good to know. Hi guys, let me know if you can see or hear me. Type in there, can you see and hear me? Hi Roxanne. It's very that Jen's not on yet. So you can hear me, babe? Oh, okay. 
Okay. Yay. All right. So you can hear me. Sorry for, we've been having so many issues with our lives this week with my phone and lives that I just wanted to make sure I wasn't just talking to myself for, you know, like <laughs> forever. So hi guys. Welcome back to our second night about all about our February 2023 release. I'm super excited because I finally get to show you guys how our um, connected circles shaker creator dies work. And it is a mouthful. I know. I know. But I wanted it to be very descriptive when it came to the names. So hi, Kimberly. Thank you for telling me that you can hear me. Okay, guys. If you can, if you want to, for me to be able to see your name, you need to give Facebook permission on, um, I'm sorry, StreamYard permission so I can see your name. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you, guys. So tonight, it might seem like this is going to be a very simple little project that we're working on, but it's, it, it's a simple project because of what these dyes can do. So originally I created the, um, they're called connected circles, shaker, creator dies. Okay. You can probably see it better this way. Originally I did this because I wanted, I was tired of spending so much time making a shaker card. I mean, I love shaker cards, obviously, because you know, we, we have tons of sequence and embellishments. So I wanted to make sure that I, um, I just wanted something that was faster, I guess you could say, and easier and a lot less wasteful when it comes to using foam and stuff. So that's how I thought of the um, shaker creator dies. Now, the first time I wanted to create what I call a floating shaker. Okay, so this is what I'm, I'm going to be using this term floating shaker, and it's not a shaker card. It is a shaker element. Okay, and but that I'm going to call a floating shaker. And I wanted to be able to put a shaker, a floating shaker on top of a card like this. OK, so when you, some, the recipient gets this card, it's not just a one dimensional shaker. If you look at it, it will have an extra element on top. And the first time I made this card, it was for my daughter and I made it. And it, it was a birthday card. And when I gave it to her, she told me, you're not getting this back, mom. I love this card <laughs> because a lot of times with me, I make cards and they're always for samples. I really don't have time. Um, I wish I did, but it's my job. So when it comes to, let's just say I'm, I'm self-employed. So I work 24 seven, right? Every day, no matter what day it is of the year. So my cards that I make are always end up with samples. But this card that I, a year and a half ago, that I thought of was actually for my daughter's birthday. She refused to give it back to me. <laughs> so that's how I, that's how I came up with the floating shaker concept is I was making a special birthday card for my daughter. Um, yeah, you certainly could. It's not necessarily just for cards. You're right, Roxanne. And I actually, I'm going to tell you guys about a project that I have planned for the upcoming creativation event, which is for retailers. And I'm going to be doing all of that live with you guys. Um, but that's a whole nother conversation. So yeah, you can totally make this and you can put something pretty on the back also. I'm not worried about the back here because it's going to just go down here. Okay, so let's talk about what the shaker creator dies do. Now, this is not going to have this is not going to be able to be done all in one night because they can do several things. Now, if all the shaker creator dies, there's five of them, one, two, three three, four, five. Yes, there's five. They come with two elements. Okay. And you might say, Nicole, what is so special about this? Why do I need this? Why are you making such a big deal about two circles? Well, I'm making a big deal about it because this literally allows you to make a shaker card. Okay. Shaker card in five minutes. And I'm talking putting the foam down and everything. It just makes it so much easier because what happens is you would use the circle. Okay, I have this one already stamped. So we would use a circle and I didn't use the small circle. I use the two inch. So I, no, I didn't use the two and a half. 
which I have here. Okay. All right, so I'm using the two and a half. So this part right here is meant to die cut into your card, like so, okay? And it's going to leave a, a, a stitching around the hole and it's going to create the perfect hole for your shaker. This can be done with any circle die, okay? Technically, this is nothing special, but this in combination with this die, which are two circles, if you see it, that are fused together. So no matter how many times you die cut this, let's call it the hollow circle, okay? No matter how many times you die cut this thing, it's always going to come out even and see when I that's what that was my issue when I was working on my daughter's the first time I created a shaking floater because um shaking floating shaker because what was happening is when I was putting two dies together like this and then going on the back of it and taping these two together right because you can do that you can take two circles and create a hollow circle with two circle dies but taping this together is the problem because you can get it to stay straight maybe the first or second time you run it through the die cut machine but if you want like six or eight of these like you do for the floating shaker element it's impossible you just will never be able to line those two circles up perfectly so that's where the simple idea of coming up with an outer piece that allows me to always create the same size for a floating shaker as well. Thanks guys. As well as coming up with an inner die that is separate that allows you to put the circle in the front of a card. So this, this die has three features that the so far that I've discovered. One, it allows you to put perfect circles with stitching in five different sizes on the front of a shaker card. Simple. Another thing it does is it allows you to create floating shakers. But neither one of these will help you with the fast and easy part of the, the connected shaker dies. The fun part about this is you can die cut this with foam. And what it does is when you put this through on foam and you die cut it out, it creates a perfect perimeter around your circle on the back of your paper. So I, don't, I really shouldn't have put this down. I don't know why I did this. I, I, anyway, so yeah, I'm going to lift it up because I just want to show you what I'm talking about. It's okay, guys. All right. So if you see... The back of my card, it allowed me to cut a perfect piece of foam that goes around my circle. And this will just go right back. It's not a big deal. And no one's going to ever see this, right? So that's where the fastness element comes up. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. So let's go ahead. Now, I did die. I went ahead and stamped this. Um, and this is uh, one of our new seamless stamps. And I'm going to take two minutes to, and then I'm, I'm going to come back on late another time and show you something that I finally figured out, not figured out. I've just never had time to come on and show you guys, um, how I line up my seamless stamps. So let me show you real quick. Cause I had my husband, um, yes, there's a dog speaking. Sorry about that. So this is one of our seamless stamps and our seamless stamps by seamless stamp. I mean, it's a stamp that you can stamp in any direction. So it can, it's a continuous pattern that you can stamp to make it as large or as small as you want. And what that does is that these stamps cost $11.99 instead of a $20.99 six by six stamp that you would stamp just once and it would cover a whole piece. However, when it comes to having these patterns that you might not use as often, much better to have them in this seamless, plus they take up so much less space. So today <laughs> I was, I didn't, I don't normally stamp my seamless live because you know, I'm supposed to be like 
perfect at professional, you know, like, you know, I don't want people think bad about me. But today I was like, you know, I have to stamp this. So I wanted to come up with some kind of way that I can make sure that I'm lining up my seamless stamp. So what I started to do is first I knew that under here I have a misty mat, okay? And I wanna protect my misty mat. Because what I've discovered is if you get ink on this sticky misty mat and you go to wipe it off, you're wiping off the glue. So I wanted a way that to, to work on this slimline card without getting ink on my misty mat. So that I took out, this is mint tape that you can buy from scrapbook.com or just post-it tape. And I put it straight down and then it dawned on me, wait a minute, I can actually take my stamp now and I'm not going to lift this up, but pretend this is my stamp. And I could take my stamp, lay it down, and then take a pencil and mark where it would, it would um, the stamp will fall. And then using those measurements. So this is like a foolproof way of not having to use math. No math at all. You're basically just using the eyeball method. And if you see that here you can see that I perf it's perfectly lined up to where it'll give me this stamp. And then the next stamp, all I have to do is move my paper either up or down, okay? So let me show you real quick. So I'm going to, so I've already marked these. So just imagine that I put these down, I put this down, well, it was really the stamp. And I marked the two sides and then I marked the tops and the bottoms. Now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to ink it up. So this is like a kind of a foolproof way of making sure, and you know, that you're going to get it correct. And you might think, Nicole, why don't you just make a jig and sell the jig for seamless stamps? Well, the problem with that is that our stamps are not always, the designs do not lend themselves to always be exactly equivalent when it comes from one design to the next. And if you think about it, there's a company called Concord, Concord, Concord and Ninth, and they have their turnabout stamps. And they came out with jigs years ago for um, their turnabout stamps, right? However, they ever, they had to come out, so their turnabout stamps were like five, six years old when they came out with the first jigs. They had to make one for 2000, 2001, I mean, or 20, whatever. They had to go back and make a jig, five jigs and sell all five jigs together because when you change stamp, it's just, it's a whole long saga. This is foolproof. I mean, you know, you don't need to buy anything else. I like that. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to wipe my stamp off. Now let's, let's hope this works and I'm not just running my mouth. And I'm going to pull this paper, I'm going to pull my paper up, okay? And I'm going to take a piece, another piece, and I'm going to stamp on top of this. And this is going to give me a, a way, a measurement, if you will, to make sure that I'm placing my paper where it belongs. So here's this, I'm going to stamp this once, okay? And now when I look at this, I can use this and the guidelines. So I'm just gonna kind of tear it a little bit so I can see my guidelines. And this will help me line up the next, the next one. So I want to stamp here next. So I need to have this hanging off. So what I'm going to do is see this little duck right here. I'm going to make sure he's even with that head of that duck. So I can place this here and it's going to be the right distance from side to side, but it needs to go up a little bit more. And look, this is hard to do live. Much easier when you don't have people watching you do this and you're nervous that, oh gosh, I hope I don't get this wrong. Okay, I think that's right. I think. Much easier to do when no one's watching you. Okay, 
and I probably should use a magnet right there. So let's see if this works. It worked earlier, both times that I did it, but again, doing it live kind of, oh, it worked. Look at that. Now, yes, I am using a lot of tape here and I'm sure there's a different way that you could you do this. However, this seems to be the only way that I can um, get them right without spending like 20 minutes figuring out how to stamp these seamless stamps. Okay, so my ducks lined up perfectly. All right, so now what I need to do is I need to move my this up. Okay, so I'm gonna move this part up. Let me put my tape first. And I think, if I'm correct, I think it's going to be right there because that's where the measurement is of all right so let's see mm, no it's not right let me use my paper and by looking at that paper, I can tell that my duck head's going to be a little bit off. All right, so it just needs to go up, down a little bit more. It's okay. All right, so everybody understands what I'm saying, right? That you can make your own little cute little pattern. And I have a feeling you can probably do take the piece of paper, regular cheap paper, and do the same exact thing by just die cutting um, a, um, a slimline card front into the very center of a piece of paper and then using that instead of masking tape. So anyway, guys, that's how I figured out how to make to get my ducks to line up. And like I said, that's not what we're here for tonight. I will do a whole entire live just on that. But if you see my docs lined up perfectly and no miss skipping spots. Okay, so I do have to draw another one that's already stamped. So let's let's go ahead and die cut this one. So we're going to die cut this twice. And I um do have two sets of this is the two and a half inch um, shaker connector dies. Okay. So I'm just lining them up and I am eyeballing it because, you know, you don't want it too close to the top. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, and you could do all three, but I don't want to do all three. I just want to have two cause I'm going to focus on having that floating shaker in the middle. So do they look straight? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to tape these down. And guys, this works with a two also. I'm just, I'm a slimline girl, okay? I, I am. I love slimline size. Uh, even if it ever goes out of trend, I still think I will probably still be making um, slimline cards uh, in the future, even if when people stop, you know, it being an on-trend thing. They just make me happy, and I like the size of it. So I'm just running this through my die-cut machine. like so okay and then i have my two what did i just say this was two and a half inch okay now i also i'm going to keep these the little inner parts because i'm going to use this for my design so i'm going to put those to the side and this is the two and a half inch circle connector okay put that one to the side now I want to make a floating shaker to put on front of this. That actually is going to come after I show you what the actual connected circle does. So I want to show you. So we're going to flip this over because this is the easy part of a shaker card. It's when you come to the back that it slows down for me for like 35, 45 minutes. And I'm like, oh. Gee whiz, this is taking forever. So that's why I thought, you know, if I had a circle 
that I could run through foam and it would die cut foam for me and allow me to then peel the foam off and place the foam perfectly around these circles. I wouldn't have to sit there and fight anymore with foam forever and ever, right? So I'm gonna grab a piece of foam. And it, you know, just as long as the foam is wide enough is all you need. And we do have foam, extra wide foam that we sell. Let me grab a piece. Put this to the side. So this is um, Tonics Tim Holtz guillotine cutter, and I've taken the shield off of it. Don't sue me if you do this. I'm not saying you should do this. This is what I did because it allows me to cut the the big piece of foam. Okay, and I can do this because this is titanium, and well, maybe titanium or it's what do you call that when something doesn't stick so what i'm going to do is i'm going to measure out my card i know is three and a half inches wide and i know my circle is two and a half inches so and we are going to have more of this tape ordered. And I promise when we get more of it in, it will have uh, parchment non-sticky on both sides of it. All right. So I'm just measuring it out and I'm trimming it down. Okay. So now I have this big square. One reason why I like this kind of foam also. Yeah. Don't take it off, guys. This is not, this is one of those, um, don't do as you see. So now I have this square. We also have these sheets, okay? But they're out of stock. So I can tell you that when I originally did this, we had these sheets in stock and you could just grab this sheet and run just this through the die cut machine without having to measure anything of the big foam. But because it's slimline, I actually go for the large one because these don't come in a slimline length. So I want this to work with slimline. So I'm going to use the big roll. All right, and I peeled the backer off of another piece to put on this one. So you can do this with parchment paper, but I promise when this stuff gets reordered, it will have sticky on both sides. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to take my connected circle and I'm going to place it on top of my foam. Just making sure that it's within, and I think that you can probably see it better this way, huh? Just to make sure that it fits round it, top and bottom. I'm gonna just put a little tape on it just to make sure it stays. And then I'm going to run it through my die cut machine. All right, I'm gonna go run to the other room and run this through real quick with my big um, die cut. Just because I find it, it doesn't matter, but for some reason, this one, this machine cuts it faster. And this is just an Anna Griffin, but it's the big Anna Griffin one. Now, it die cut it, okay? This big, huge piece of foam is, so you see it die cut it perfectly into three parts. All three of these parts you can use for different things. Now, for this card, let's say, so I'm going to leave the center and the outside part on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull just 
this outer off. This is not trash. Do not throw this away. I'll show you another day what you can do with this. Don't throw it away. This inner part is also not trash. So don't throw it away. But what I want to do is I want to pop this apart without stretching this circle. You don't want to stretch this inner circle. So I'm just very gently, I'm actually just gonna, let's see. Don't throw this away. So I'm going to leave one part of this on. And what's gonna happen is, look at that. Now I have the perfect shape circle every single time for my two and a half inch circle that makes a shaker card. When I tell you that, uh, so this is a simple concept, but it was, it's a simple concept that really will speed up all of your shaker cards. And you can also use them to make the floating shakers and many different things. You're going to see how this, the inside, this can also become a, a floating shaker just upon itself. It's good guys. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to pull up just one side of this. Okay, wait, first I need to put some plastic, some acetate down. So I, I, since it's a shaker card, I do need to put a piece of acetate down first. So let me grab a piece of acetate. And I need double-sided tape. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put double-sided tape all around this just to make sure, of course, this is not double sided tape. Okay, so I'm going to take double sided tape And I'm going to go around the entire portion of my circle because I want to put down the acetate before I put my thumb. <clears throat> now again, this is much faster when you're not doing this live and talking out all the steps. Okay. Doesn't matter how pretty or ugly the double sided tape is. And I am using Elizabeth Crafts double sided tape. I, she's my, one of my friends and I like her uh, products. So here I'm just going to eyeball, place this down. And it doesn't, then I can take my scissors. And because I don't have tape all over this piece of acetate, I can just trim off. And this is wasteful, but it's, again, alive. <laughs> and, you know, you just kind of have to, you can't waste time on little things. So I am, so just that simple. So next I'm going to put more acetate here. Well, let's do this first. So now I'm ready for my foam, okay? So I can take my foam, this is the acetate, so my foam, one part of my foam, because remember, it really cut it into four, but I'm only using this circle for this part. So I can come here and place my circle, okay? Ta-da! Look how fast that was! I know it took me 35 minutes to get to this point, but look, look! I just slapped acid. So all I did was stamp, die cut a circle, then die cut this part into foam, and then peel it apart, slapped it down, and baby, look, all you got to do now is steal your shaker, right? We do sell foam. We have the big rolls still. And guys, this huge roll is only $40. I mean, and it's four inches. It's a little under four inches um, wide. And I would be lying. I don't know. Jen, could you put up the, how long it is, please? So this is like 40 bucks. And this is very, this is like half, this is a quarter, about a quarter of this is missing. This is not even the full size of it. So now look what you can do. 
Now I can just grab my stuff that I want to put in the center. And I used, for this card, I used just plain white shaker bits. But for this one, I'm going to use, this is Chicks in the Grass. So this is a new one for February. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to fill in my shaker with it as much as I want, right? I like a lot. So this one's gonna be an Easter card. So here's Chicks in the Grass because it has little Easter eggs in it too. Now all I have to do is I can peel this off, grab another piece of acetate. I do use two pieces of acetate, I know. A lot of people don't. But I do use two pieces when I'm, if I spend this much time and money on a shaker, I'm going to use two pieces of acetate. So this time I'm just going to come and I'm going to lay my acetate on top. Like so. Push it down. And then I'm going to trim it off. I mean, you can pre-die cut, you could pre, you know, have this piece of acetate already cut out. But I'm gonna be honest, I just find this is so much easier to just slap it down and then take a pair of scissors and trim around it because no one is going to see this, right? No one. And I'm just gonna trim this off. Okay. Now, look at that. Look, wasn't that fast? How cool is that, right? Now, I could go ahead and do the other one also to show you real fast. Or I can show you what to do with it this size. So this piece right here is smaller than my paper. Okay, I think it should be. Let's see. Because what I could have done is I could... Ah, Sorry, I could have used this part right here also to put down, but it, it's a little big in the center. Anyway, that's, I'm just showing you, you can use this part for this or for something else. I'll show you more later. Now, that's how fast and easy it is, foam. So if I could, if I wanted to, I could use this and I could pop this on the back of this piece of foam here so I could have a shaker here. And then I'm gonna show you something else later on in the future that you can make an, an outer, like you have an inner and an outer belly button. You can have an any and an outer shaker also. So if you look at this, you'll see that, uh, so you see I did it twice here, right? But here, but here I just used the white garnish. And so, cause I didn't know what, how, what direction I wanted it to go. Now let's, I'm not gonna have, we don't have time tonight to show you how to do a full floater, but this is what I plan on using to make a shaker, my shaker floater for this card. Originally, where did go? I made this little green one and it's not that I don't, oh, you know what, this green one, I made this green one to go he here. And I don't know why, I just don't like it. I mean, it's cute. It's cute. I wonder if it would look better on this one. Oh yeah. So you see, after I make my shaker, the rest of this shaker tomorrow, later, I'm going to, oh yeah, that looks much better. I'll be able to use the, the little green one on here. So this is a floating shaker that I made with the one and a half inch circles and it would go right there. So this one though, this one, I think I'm going to go with this orange circle that I made with Lux. So I made an orange one and I made a yellow one because I've just, and you know what? I could even do this. I can even put a floater inside at the circle. How about that? What does that look like? Let me see. Let's put the orange inside the green. Eh, eh, not so much. Let's see if it looks good inside the yellow. So this is me making a floater with a, eh, it's okay. I don't know. 
I'm still not loving it, but this is super cute. And if you wanted to look, you could even take this and pop it into the center right there to where you can use the shaker circle and make a floating shaker and sink it into the card. And then you could push your card down and it's like centered. Or like I said, I'm going to probably put it floating right here. And then we'll see. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do or how, where I'm going to take this. Because tonight my goal was just to show you how to get this far with the stamping and with the die cutting. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and die cut another piece of foam to finish this back right here. So let me grab a piece of foam. Oh, I have one right here. And I'm going to die cut this foam. So let me cut another piece. Uh-oh, I just dropped the die. So I'm gonna cut another piece of this, making sure it's the right size with this die. Yep, it works. Okay, release. <laughs> it's my fault. I'm going to take a piece from uh, that I had laying around to put on the back here. Now I'm going to go die cut this in my, I'll be right back. Okay, all right, so here's another piece of the foam. And I want to use the circle here. Let me, I'm gonna cut off a little bit of this excess acetate because I wanna make sure my foam fits right there. So I'm gonna leave everything on here. I'm just going to pull this part out. I don't throw this away. And I'm going to gently without stretching or attempting to not stretch because you can stretch foam so easily and then it's the wrong size, right? Okay. So I'm just going to pull this part off for now. <clears throat> and I'm going to pull one piece off and leave the other one on. So a little concerned that this one might show. Will it show? Let's see. Nope. So when I die, so you can see, see all this extra space right here. That's not, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you can't see the foam from the front. The reason why it's off a little bit is because this is the, the distance I put between these two circles. So, as you can see how simple that was, except I didn't put my acetate down first. So let me pull this up. And our foam, by the way, it is um, has some forgiveness to it. If you make a mistake, you can pull it out up and it's still sticky, but I should have put my double-sided tape first. So let me put my double-sided tape because I do need to put acetate down first. Oops, a little a bit too short. All right. 
now I'm going to take another piece of acetate. Again, I don't usually waste this much, but for this, I don't really have a choice. So I'm just going to center it <clears throat> right above the tape and on this edge. And then I'm going to cut this rest of this off and save it for something else. I'm not really wasting, I'm just using a lot of half sheets. Cut. Okay. Now I can take my foam and put it back where it was. But do you see how it has stretched a little bit? So that's why I was saying that you just kind of need to be careful when you pull it off because it will stretch. But so let's see, I'm going to butt this up against here as much as possible so it doesn't show. Look from the other side, I can see it. You can see it because I stretched it. But that's okay. Let's see if I can get it. Oh, you know what? I'm just going to trim a little bit off the top of it. But this is, like I said, totally my fault. <coughs> so I'm just going to squish it in there. And then I can just take this <coughs> and wrap it around. That's why I was showing earlier, don't squeeze the foam. Because if you stretch, I mean stretch, if you stretch the foam too much, it it, it's foam. It stretches, right? But it's okay because you can just fudge it a little bit. Okay. Now, it's not gorgeous, but I stretched it. So it's live. This is what things happen with lives. Now I'm going to go ahead and fill this up with the same. Um, no, this is not the same. The chicks in the grass. This one, chicks in the grass. Hardest thing about a shaker is making sure you get the same amount of stuff in, right? Okay. Now I'm going to take another piece of acetate. And now I'm ready to just slap this on top like so, like I've done before. Cut this off. going to cut this off because it's annoying me. All right. And there you go. Now we have front and back. Now it's up to you what you would want to put on the back of this, but I'm going to um, mat it on top of white. So I just need to focus on cutting a square of foam tape that goes right here. So that way my card is level and I'm not going to make you guys watch that. All right, so if you can see here, I've made a double shaker and it's so, so simple with this. But again, now I think the green, I think my little floating green, let me put the white underneath this so you guys can see it. And now I like the floating shaker on top of these two circles, maybe. I'm not sure. Still not loving it. Still, uh, something's with the color, I don't know. But anyway. So it might be better with a small, a larger circle. It might be better with it like this. Yeah, it might be better with it with bright orange and the green on the inside. Oh, no, absolutely not. Or how about orange with the ducks on the back of it? Or should we put, this was the inside piece that we die cut. Should we put this yellow on top of the circle of ducks. I don't know. We're not gonna, I'm not feeling that. I'm not sure about that. But my goal tonight was not to finish this card with you guys. I just wanted to get to this part. So tomorrow night, or not tomorrow, 
in the future, it won't be tomorrow though, um, I can come back and show you how to build a floating shaker, okay? And that is so super easy, very, very easy. Yes, uh, so tonight, guys, was all about me showing you how to use our new um, connected circle shaker creator dies. And I've shown you how you can use them to create the die, the cuts into your paper, as well as I showed you how you can use them. Now, don't look at this one. How to make, how the, you can use the outer circle of our shaker creator dies, this piece, to die cut foam that you can put on the back of your paper that perfectly um, fits around the the outside of the circle that you die cut. So this card, if I wasn't talking, I could pro I can do probably all of these steps. This all this steps in ten minutes. Where before I'm not joking, this would have taken me forty five minutes because I would have sat there fighting with the foam forever. For, I have really dry skin on my fingers and. Everything sticky really sticks to my fingers. And this just saves me so much time. And then also you can use them to create floating shakers, or I'm gonna show you another trick that you can actually use this inner piece if you want. And you, instead of making a shaker, you can make an element on top of your card with the inside of the, the, the positive side of the inside of the double circle connector. So, you know, you can do something like this. And then, oh, that would, well, let's see. I could even put this around this. Anyway, so there's so many different things, right? <laughs> you need to make all the shapes. Um, I will tell you that one, another shape is already in stock. It won't be, it'll be a couple of months though, because we just want to make sure we get the word out about how this works first before we release the next shape. Um, but there are five of these guys. So there's a one and a half, a two inch, two and a half, three inch, and then three and a half. And I know a lot of people are going to think, Nicole, a three and a half circle, that's huge. Okay, it might look huge, but to be honest with you, it's not as big as you think. And starting next week, I'm going to be doing a project and I'm just going to be doing it. Live. It's going to be a project for creativation. And I'm just going to come on and do it live with you guys. If someone watches, they do. If not, okay, my project will get done. And you're going to see how I'm going to use this shaker. And I'm going to make a whole bunch of floating shakers to uh, make a display, if you will. Okay. And also people have the five by seven cards. I mean, you know, it's fabulous. So we will have more shapes in the future. Anyway. All right. Questions. Does anybody have a question before we end this tonight? Sorry if I was a little all over the place. It's technically the first time I've explained all the different steps of what the shaker creators do. And when you have a die that is so simple like this, but it really truly can make um things go so much faster so does anyone have any questions nope all right guys well thanks for hanging around with me i appreciate it i will come back and show you more directions another night on how to make your own um guide for each individual seamless stamp and i can tell you sitting here working it out today it was much faster after I figured it out. All right, yay, the foam. So do you see the foam? Wait, okay, so this, the foam looks like this. However, this is like a cord, it's about this much thicker. This has been used. Um, I, I grabbed a small one. Yes, we do sell the foam. If Jen, if you're still uh, still hanging out with me, if you can go ahead and drop the link for the foam, it comes in white and it comes in black. Now we're out of the sheets. That's why I, I didn't use the sheet. We used, used to have these sheets. Um, and for some reason people gobbled all those up, but this right here is only $40. Okay. It is, um, thank you, Jen. It is uh, a little under four inches wide. And I, gosh, I can't remember how many yards it is, but it's a lot of foam. I'm sure one of these, unless you're a major shaker maker, <laughs> that rhymes, um, you'll use this the rest of your life, you know, and it comes in white and it comes in black. 
And I'm going to be honest with you. I like the black. I love the black because anytime I'm making a darker card, I never want to use white foam. I, I'll, if it's something like blue or green or anything on the darker side, I will not use white foam. I will always grab. It's a 50 foot roll. Yes. So it's right under four inches. Okay. It's not quite four. And then it's 50 feet long and uh, almost positive it's $39. I, I, you know, I hope it is because <laughs> I, I know I never remember prices. Come on. After I, I, that's just not my job, right? It's not what I do with BFS. All right, guys. Well, I hope you have a good evening. Go relax. Yes, it is 30. So it is $40. So it's $40 for 40 feet of foam, but the foam is almost four inches wide so you're not paying you're not getting this much foam you know you're getting this much foam multiplied by five feet 40 feet all right see you guys later i will be back soon to finish this up and show you more things you can do with your shaker creators i did forget um so we do have all the shaker creators in a buy it all so if you go on the website and you purchase the shaker creators with the buy it all, you get a 10% discount and sh free shipping at $60. So I'm not sure how much all five of them are together, but it is, um, there is a buy it all button that if you buy all five of them, then you will, uh, get a 10% discount. So, and maybe free shipping. All right, I'll see you guys later. Have a good night. Bye-bye.